Well, you mentioned that it got Chris Doby into the Premier League, and that brings us to our first of two qu- related questions of the week. Chris Doby making his debut, the only debutante in the Premier League as the field was announced on Monday morning. I'm sure all of our listeners have heard by now what that Premier League field is, but in case they haven't, um, in order of their current ranking, they're Michael Smith, Peter Wright, Michael Van Guren, Guren Price, Johnny Clayton, Nathan Aspinall, Dimitri Vandenberg, and the newly crowned Masters champion Chris Doby. What do you make of the field for 2023? Yeah, I'm not sure why we're talking about it because no one seemed that interested. No, joking aside, social media blew up, didn't it, after the the lineup was announced and the two questions of the week that we've got about it. The the first one, the last time I looked, was close to 500 votes and it is, what do you make of the lineup? And 14% of our listeners have got their thumbs up. They're doing the Andrew Gilding. 32% of our listeners are are indifferent. They're either thumbs up or or thumbs down. And then 54% of our listeners are going thumbs down which is is quite a percentage and some comments that we've had from our listeners at yellow blue 31 says to me go back to the old format with 10 or even 12 players so much quality at carefree eds 86 said boring needs to get back to the old format ross smith proper unlucky to miss out cross two and for me i'm happy with it cast your mind back to the day of the world championship final and i put a tweet out saying the eight that i would go with and they were right van gerwin Michael Smith, Price, Clayton, Aspinall, Noppert, Vandenberg. So I got seven out of eight right there. And the one I got wrong, Danny Noppert, it's been replaced by Chris Doby. And after he won the Masters, and I think had Chris Doby not won the Masters and we'd have seen Michael Smith or, or Peter Wright or even Rob Cross win it on that Sunday night, then maybe Danny Noppert might have just got the nod and I'd have looked very smug with a, a full house four weeks ago when I made that prediction. But no, I, I think it is a good lineup and this is coming from someone who I wouldn't say I'm a devoted watcher of the Premier League. And in fact, I know next uh, next week, the, the second week, I won't be sitting and watching it because I'll be at the Circus Tavern watching the, the World Seniors on that first day. But if I'm at home and, and I've got nothing else on, then I, I probably will give it a watch. But it is a, a long tournament, 16, 17 weeks. And although the new format is great for the fans in the venues, I think that part of it, changing the format to the nightly tournament, that is an aspect of it that has worked very well. But as a fan watching at home, it, it does feel more repetitive now. And, and we've lost that jeopardy as well of the, the elimination of, of two players on, on judgment night after week nine. So now it is all about getting to the playoffs, getting in the top four and that the table, you don't really start to look at it closely until probably week 10, week 11. There's more points on offer now each night. So for me, the lineup, it looks like I'm in the minority here with the, the thumbs up. But you've got the top four in there. You add in Johnny Clayton, who won it two years ago, topped the table last year. Nathan Aspinall, the the story of his comeback from injury this time last year, he was out on the sidelines fearing for his career and he's shown since he's come back that he can still mix it with the best. Dimitri, I thought he was unlucky not to get in uh, last year with the cutback from 10 to 8 players. He was one of the players I thought who got hurt the most by that decision to take two players out of it. But again, we've seen last year two World Series titles, semi-finals of the World Match Play World Championships and okay, the World Championships, he, he got a bit of a hiding from Michael Van Gerwen in that semi-final, but the match play was a, a very close game with him and Michael. And then you've got Chris Doby, the, the wild card of the eight, you'd say, his first full Premier League season. He's had some scalps, not just at the weekend, but over the last few years. And I'm interested to see how he's going to fare with it all. So the most interesting thing for me is, do we see the top four make the playoffs? Because I don't think it's going to be that simple. Going price has never been there. Peter Wright, I think only twice in nine or ten seasons and then Michael Smith maybe once or twice as well so that's probably going to be the main storyline that's going to keep me interested in this Premier League yeah and uh well and I'll like you limit it to the players who got in because we will be after uh hearing from Chris Doby we'll be talking about the players who are not going to be in the Premier League so sticking to the ones who are in I, I think it's not necessarily the lineup I would have picked but it's absolutely a justifiable lineup and you know I mean no They've never not selected the top four. Yes, Gurren Price withdrew due to COVID a couple of years ago. And I can't remember if Gary Anderson was still in the top four when he withdrew due to in, uh, injury or not. But the top four historically have been guaranteed. Everyone seems to accept that. And there was not really going to be a world where the top four weren't selected this year, even if that weren't the policy. So that left four spots. And following the recent tradition, the Masters champ, if they're not in the top four, gets in. So Chris Dobie got in for that. So 
those five are accounted for. That leaves the other three, which you could have argued none of the three should have been in, but you could also make the argument all three should. And I'm going to make the argument right now that all, you know, why all three can be justified. You know, starting with Johnny Clayton, the highest ranked of the three, he won the Premier League on debut now t- nearly two years ago, and then he topped the table the following year. So it's he's done a fantastic job in two Premier League campaigns. Now, did Johnny Clayton fall up on the Premier League last year with anything really big to ride home on? No. He went out second round in the uh, Grand Slam. That's the last 16. Second round, that's the last 16 in the European Championship. Second round, that's also the last 16 in the Grand Prix after going out first round in the World Match Play. So those four majors were all early defeats. But he started to come on strong at the back end of the year. Um, and it wasn't, you know, just in majors. He made a semifinal, the second to last European tour hit, equaling his best run of the year, which he had done all the way back in March. So at the end of the year, he had a deep run in the Euro Tour in September. He also made Made it to the semifinals for the second year running in the Players' Championship final, his best run on television in a ranking major all year. And then he followed it with his first ever quarterfinal at the World Championships, uh, where he had the only event he hadn't yet made at least the quarterfinals of before going out in a tight match to Dimitri Vandenberg. So it was a really good end to the year. Now, Clayton did not reach the very, very heights that we have seen from him before. We didn't see those 106 averages, but he still was playing better. He beat Josh Rock in the World Championships, who we'll talk about again in a second when we come on to Nathan Aspinall. So Johnny Clayton, when you factor in his Premier League record over the two years in the Premier League, plus the fact that at the back end of the year, he was playing some of his best starts, I think you can justify giving him a third go. At the very least, we know that this is a format and a competition he likes, and he's going to he's gonna bring his game. And he's a likable, a fan favorite player. Now, as for the other two that were borderline, we'll go on. I'll continue in uh, order of current ranking. We'll go to Nathan Aspinall. There was an argument that Nathan Aspinall had played his way out of the Premier League um, at the back end of the year, the exact opposite of Johnny Clayton playing his way in. Of course, Aspinall made the two major finals this year and Nearly came back from four sets to nil down against uh, Michael Van Guren in the World Grand Prix before losing 5-3. Just had nothing in the final against Michael Smith in the Grand Slam, but it was phenomenal up until that in the tournament. But he maybe played his way out with an early exit to uh, Danny Van Tripe at the uh, sorry to Martin Clearmiker at the uh, uh, Players Championship Finals, and then going out in a fantastic match to Josh Rock in the third round of the World Championships, followed up by losing the first round of the Masters. There was some argument that maybe Nathan had played his way out, but he made two ranking finals in the back half of the season, and he played well even when losing at the end. I think that, plus the fact he made three European Tour semifinals, he won a pair of players' championship events. He clearly had put together overall, both on television and on the floor and on the Euro Tour, a very good campaign. He didn't win a major, but he made two finals. I think even with the struggles at the back end of the year, that was, you know, got him over the line, especially since he's done well in this before. He got dropped after making the final in the Premier League in 2020. So maybe this is a a bit of a uh, mea culpa for that. And then finally, Dimitri Vandenberg, you mentioned making the semifinals of the World Championships. Yes, uh, he had... Well, nothing in that semifinal against uh, Michael Van Guren, but he had been very good up until then. And he made the semifinals of the Players' Championship as well, also going out to the eventual winner, Michael Van Guren. But that was much earlier in the event in the third round when Van Guren averaged 106 against him. But Dimitri Vandenberg, you mentioned he won those two uh, events in the World Series. That can't count for nothing. And he also made those semifinals of the World Match Play and the World Championships. I think that... Those two things combined got him into this field. And as you also mentioned, that the fact that he was probably the one player who was left out last year when they cut back from nine to eight and uh, was probably that first person on the outside after a year that he made two major finals. I think all that together, it's another mea culpa. But all of those, you know, are deserved. We'll come on in a second uh, to the players who were left out. But I think you can make an argument for all three. Again, they weren't necessarily the three I would have put in, but they're easily defensible selections. 